Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. I have officially broken out the ring light that clips onto my camera because it is dark. I can't believe how quickly it has stayed darker in the morning and gotten darker faster at night. It's crazy. So I wanted to hop on really quick before I head into my workshop and let you know how my week went. So first of all, I have one question. Why does this always happen to me? Why do I start my time of the month right before I weigh in? Why? Why am I cursed with that? It is inevitable for me to start when I'm having a good week, things are looking pretty good on preliminarily weighing in on the scale, and then bam, it's here. And it all goes down the drain. Well, not all goes down the drain, but it definitely makes the loss on the scale a little bit more challenging. So that is what has happened to me this week. So as you know now, it is my time of the month. I did have a good week overall. I was extra hungry this week and now I know why. So I did eat all of my points every day, had my splurge day where I use my weeklies, but overall I actually had a really good week. I was busy with work again, still haven't really gotten into a regular exercise routine. Somebody tell me to do it. Like somebody tell me that that's the next step for me. Please give me the encouragement, the swift kick in the you know what that I need to get started back into exercising. <sighs> so anyways, I had a really good week food wise other than being a girl. So we shall see when I step on the scale. I definitely will be back to share with you what we discuss in this week's topic. It should be light out by then. And of course, how it went when I stepped on the scale. So if you wanna see how this last week went for me, then just stay tuned. We got a new WW sign on our workshop, which is exciting. I like it so much better. It was a little dated before and it said Weight Watchers. So I love it and I wanted to show it to you guys. My uh, leader said that we're one of the last places to get the new sign. So you've probably already seen it in your area, but I wanted to share it with you. I really like it. So let's talk a little bit about this week's topic. So unfortunately at the workshop today, we didn't dive too deep into it. One of our members, uh, was really struggling with her weight loss. Um, she was very emotional. So we all kind of teamed up and helped walk her through some tips and tricks, which is so amazing. And that is one of the reasons I love the workshops is the camaraderie and the friendships that you build and the support system, similar to what we have here on YouTube, uh, what I have here with you guys, you all support me and help me when I'm struggling and we wanted to help her. So we spent a lot of the meeting talking about her and her struggles, which was awesome. And I feel like she left the workshop feeling much better and more confident in her journey. So it was well worth the time that we spent. But we did dive into the topic just a little bit. And the topic this week is a great one. It's talking about sitting and sitting for too long, how it increases your blood pressure. It contributes to diabetes. And of course, it contributes to a bigger waistline. So we talked about some tips and tricks and things that we can do when we find ourselves sitting too long to get up, to get moving, to stand up and to not sit for hours on end. So I wanted to share some of those tips with you and some ways to help you create some new habits when it comes to sitting versus standing. So the first thing to do to combat sitting for too long is to give yourself a cue and a reminder that it's time to get up. So for example, if you're watching a TV show and a commercial comes on, that's your cue. That's your cue to get up and walk around, stand up, do a little bit of movement. Shoot, you can even walk in place. It's just your cue to get up off of the couch or wherever it is that you're sitting and watching TV. Another thing is at work, you can set alarms on your phone, on your computer that tell you to get up every half of an hour or every hour or whatever works into your schedule while you're working. Also, if you have a Fitbit, it does beep or vibrate at you every hour if you have not met your 250 steps per hour. So that's another good cue or reminder to get up, 
stand up, move around. Even if you make a lap around your island in your kitchen, set yourself a reminder to get a little bit of not sitting time in every half of an hour to an hour. And number two, decide what your new behavior is going to be. Again, are you going to just stand up? Are you going to walk in place? Are you going to make a lap from your living room, your bedroom, into the kitchen and back? What are you going to do when you're cued to get up from a sitting position? I know for me, I can sit at my computer for hours working, looking for houses, sending emails. I mean, I literally can spend hours on my computer. So this is great for me to give myself some sort of a cue or reminder to get up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not only follow here with my Fitbit when it cues me to get up, but also I'm going to set a alarm on my phone once an hour to get up and I'm going to try to get in 250 steps every time I get up. And for me, that probably means walking around the island in my kitchen until I hit that 250 step mark. But for me, this is the cue that I need to get up every hour because I know myself and I can sit there a long time just working away. I'm so involved in what I'm doing. And I know this is something that a lot of us struggle with. Or I get really into a TV show and I don't want to get up and move around because I'm really into the TV show. So set yourself that reminder in that cue and decide what action you're going to take when that reminder goes off. And number three, and this is what we call the habit loop. There's three pieces to it. So number three will compare complete the loop, the habit loop, and that is focus on the reward. So what is the reward of you getting up every commercial? What's the reward of you getting up every hour? For me, it's hitting my step goal. It's getting that little loop on my Fitbit that says, congratulations, you've done your steps every hour today. Those types of things are the rewards. Not only will you feel better, but you'll get in that little bit of extra exercise or activity or movement without doing anything. Literally, you're getting up on a commercial and you're taking a few steps and you're coming back when the TV show starts back up. And that's a great way to time it. Get up when the commercials start, come back when the commercials end. You don't miss your show, but you're still getting in that little bit of movement and that little bit of extra steps. So that way you have completely done the habit loop. Steps one, two, and three, and now it's start over at step one the next day. So just really great tips and tricks on how to not sit so much. I definitely needed these. I, I sit a lot for work. So I needed this workshop. It was a great, I think it's great. Anytime you want to start a new habit in general is to do three things. Identify the habit you want to start, create an action plan for that habit, and close the gap by focusing on the reward that you receive from starting that new habit. I love it. It was a great workshop topic, something I've never really thought much about, but something I definitely needed to know. So now let's get into my weigh-in. As I mentioned before going into my workshop, I had a pretty good week food-wise. I was very hungry, which is to be known when you're about to start your time of the month as a girl. You get really hungry. You have weird cravings. I was just really hungry this week and it all kind of made sense come Wednesday. So actually I did step on the scale on Tuesday prior to my time of the month and I was down a little over a pound. My week was going good, but there's a but, a big but. When I stepped on the scale today after having started my time of the month, I was actually up 1.4 pounds. Not really happy about that because I know in my heart of hearts that I didn't do anything to earn that 1.4 gain. So it's got to be because of what it is. Because of the time of the month, it's got to be that's where that gain is coming from because it really isn't warranted in any other way. So I was disappointed when I stepped on the scale. Of course, I never want to see a gain, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. And I had a gain when I stepped on the scale. So hopefully that kind of filters itself out. And next week when I get on, I can lose even a little bit more than that 1.4 because it is almost time for Vegas. You guys, it is in just a few weeks, my meetup in Las Vegas. If you're not part of my Facebook group, definitely head over there. I'm going to put it right there on the screen for you guys, because not only do we have a challenge coming up, but our meetup in Vegas is coming up the 12th of October. So I'm hoping to have a good loss next week. This whole being a girl thing will be over and it should really hopefully step up to the plate when I get on the scale next week. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the scale. So do not let the scale define who you are. And that is part of what this 
member today in our workshop was talking about. She said she weighs herself throughout the week and if she's up at all, and you know, we can fluctuate our weight daily, she gets very discouraged. And in fact, when she came into the workshop today, she didn't even want to weigh in, even though she knew what she already weighed. So I know that the scale is what Weight Watchers looks at, right? Our goal is to have the scale move when we step on it. But the scale doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define your journey. It doesn't define the improvements that you're making in your health or the improvements that you're making in your mindset or loving yourself more. The scale does not define who you are. And there are people here on YouTube, on social media that always have an opinion on how much people have lost or not lost, but it doesn't always matter. It doesn't matter, especially if you feel that someone's lost what you think they should lose. It's none of your business. It's not your journey. So you can keep that opinion to yourself, of course. But what if, what if, we're okay with our slow loss because we feel better and we're seeing other improvements that you don't see on the outside. And that's what we tried to tell her today is we don't know the improvements that you see and how you're feeling in your health because only you know those things. And don't let the scale define who you are. So I need to remember that because whenever I step on the scale like I did today and I see a little bit of a gain, I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. Uh, you, can, you can even go so far as to throw in the towel and never let the scale do that to you, you guys, and never let someone else define your journey and tell you if you're losing at the rate that they think that you should be losing. Because again, they're not you. It's not their business. And they really, really, truly need to not talk about other people's journeys. Whatever we do for us is what we're doing for us. And it is about self-care and taking care of us. So on a little side note, don't let the scale, the scale define who you are and focus more on how you're feeling and the things you did good, whether you gained or lost when you stepped on the scale. So my goals for this next week are to track everything honestly and hopefully see a loss on the scale, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on myself. I'm going to try to get in that little bit of extra activity. I am going to get more movement in and not sit for such long periods of time. That's actually my main goal this next week. I want to implement that into my life so that it becomes a habit for me and I close that habit wheel and I now get up during commercials. I now get up while I'm working and move around a little bit. So that is my goals for this next week and hopefully if all goes well it resonates on the scale next week. But again the scale isn't everything. You guys the scale is not everything. So I want to hear how your week went. What do you think of this habit loop? What do you think about getting up and moving around a little bit more if you do have a job or you're in a position where you're sitting a lot during the day? And if you're new, hello guys, welcome. I do a weigh-in video every Friday, good or bad. I tell you what happens when I step on the scale and we recap the workshop that WW puts on. These topics are so essential on your journey and I like to be able to share them with you, especially those of you that don't have a workshop in your area, can't afford to go to a workshop or just don't make it to it this week. At least you get to know what it was all about and hopefully it helps you on your journey. And make sure that you are subscribing if you're new and hitting that bell so that you're notified every time that I upload a new video. You don't want to miss a single one. And remember, you guys, do not let the scale or other people define your journey and who you are. Let you define your journey and who you are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd appreciate a thumbs up on this one. And again, please comment down below. Let me know how your guys' week went and what you thought of this workshop topic. And what are your thoughts on the scale? Do you let it define you? And if you do, what are you going to do to stop doing that? Because it isn't everything in the world, guys. Believe me. There are so many better things in life to define who you are as a person than the scale. So thank you guys again so much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. <music>